Welcome back. Congressman John Shimkus is joining us this morning to talk a little bit about everything. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Great to be with you. How are you me. doing this morning? Yeah. It's pretty early, but I'm a military guy, so I'm... Um, early is good for me. We appreciate the yeah. early rising yeah, yes. this morning. Right, right. So we want to begin, good. of course, with the passing of Senator John yeah. McCain. Um, he is going to his funeral is this weekend. Of course, a lot of people have been paying their respects yeah. for the past week. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I'm an icon of yeah. uh, not just military service, but of, of government political service. Uh, his own guy, you know, uh, danced to his own tune. Uh, I was an early supporter in 2008. Uh, early for I usually I don't jump off the board but I I think his military service his conviction and his his work effort that uh, he will be missed I we we didn't know yeah. each other real well but he would always tease me of course he's a Annapolis grad I'm a West Point grad so bit of a rivalry <laughs> a little there. bit of uh, yeah. Yeah, a little like rivalry. a friendly kind of <laughs> that's, right. yeah. that's right so uh, he, he will be missed uh, uh, across the board Absolutely. So bringing things back here to central Illinois, um, one of the things that some of your constituents may be concerned about, particularly farmers, um, some of the tariffs that President Trump has imposed. Um, you know, at, at this point, is there any reassurance that you could give them about some of their concerns with that? Um, you know, like the president of the Illinois Farm Bureau has said, farmers can't hold on to this forever. Yeah, I, I think the president understands that. He, he knows this is a, a quote unquote a trade war, and then there, there are people who get hurt by that, uh, you know. And that's why he's mentioned this 12 billion, whatever that is, to help offset their, some losses. Uh, you know, good news. A couple days ago, we think there's a deal with Mexico uh, in one of the major papers, uh, whether it's the Times or the Wall Street Journal. There's a, a front page story about how this tariff war is really uh, looks like it might be successful in, in the auto sector, um, and I think that's part of the Mexico agreement. Um, uh, milk. I have a large dairy county in the state of Illinois, and. You know, Canada has a 270 percent tariff on U.S. milk imports, so it's kind of a balancing. And most of my producers, they don't like this risk that they're under, okay. mm -hmm. but they're they're in it for the fight for a short term. Uh, you know, I don't. If this goes long, I think I'll hear more vocally. Got a meeting today. You know, tool shed meeting with the Farm Bureau. I'm sure we'll talk about it there. Are you hopeful that it will stay in the short term? Uh, we're praying that it stays in the short term mm -hmm. and that there's renegotiations and that yeah, look at what happened with the EU. The EU has come out and said we're going to move to zero tariffs across the board. This was about a month ago. So you can't get better than zero. Uh, that means you're going to compete on your own, be able to produce, purchase commodities, manufacture and across the board that's, that was, that's pretty historic and I think that's where we want to be. Absolutely. So another one of the big things that you have been advocating for is reforms to fuel law. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, those people, especially in central Illinois, especially the corn growers, the Farm Bureau, um, corners our crop, right? And so it, it's also soybeans a little bit with biodiesel, but mostly corn. Um, so there's a process. I was involved with it with the renew renewable fuel standards that we got to have 15 billion gallons in the, in the nation's fuel supply. But the debate was basically energy security because that we were importing all this crude oil. We didn't think we had all this uh, ability to uh, uh, recover oil like we do today. So even the, the policy has changed and our ability to change. So we have an oil and gas guys, refiners saying this accounting process, which we call RINs, is broken. It, it distorts the market. So we're trying to ease that. But the real debate is, that, you know, we're at, you're in Champaign-Urbana, we're at the U of I, uh, great engineering school. Why don't we get our best uh, engineers who who engine engineer engines and our best petrochemical and liquid engineers and what is the most efficient engine and I think most people believe that is a high compression high octane I mean, long story short high octane means more access for ethanol in the liquid transportation market Okay. Interesting. Real quick, can we talk midterms now? Um, sure. Is there a concern Republicans will lose the majority with this Democrats promoting the blue wave across the state? You know, I, I think it's going to be a very exciting cycle, um, and we've seen this before. Uh, and there could be uh, voter swings into the tens, the twenty thousands, in some of these districts. And so it really depends. It really comes down to individual members. 
Uh, do they know their district? Do people see them in the area? Are they working their, their, their issues? If you're a lazy member of Congress in this environment, you can be defeated. If you're hardworking, responsive, available, accessible, uh, people see you, I, I think you can, can survive it. Uh, so I, I think we hold the majority. I think we hold it by a couple seats. Uh, I, was, I served once when we had a five seat majority. Sometimes it's more easier to govern <laughs> with a small majority than a big majority. Depends on the year. It depends on the year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. yeah. Thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more of the morning show right after this.